Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to the second edition of the Doubles Duel. We're coming to you tonight from Holiday Lanes in Manchester, Connecticut. I'm Pat Rufo, and I'm joined in the broadcasting booth once again by my partner, Eric Ruteska. Good evening, Eric. Thanks, Pat. Tonight we bring you uh, Doubles, Doubles Duel Part 2. Uh, we have with us tonight two fresh new competitors in Mike Labrie and Brian Miller, both longtime house bowlers and pro tour competitors. They're set up tonight to try to topple our defending champions, Rick Danzero and Luke Robustelli. And they'll be attempting to do that in just a few moments. Right now, we're going to turn it back to the booth and our executive producer, Brian Ewing, who's put together a video recap of the inaugural Doubles Duel. Thanks, guys. Duckman TV debuted with the Doubles Duel 1. This was a match between Eric Pellet and Kyle Shaw and Rick Danzero and Luke Robustelli. First match was Kyle Shaw versus Robustelli, and Kyle came out to a demanding lead, but he was only up as much as 20, and Luke hung around all the way till the end. After seven frames, Luke was down 19, and this is where he made his move with that emphatic strike there. Kyle opened in the ninth, but spared in the 10th, and filled it with 10 to put some pressure on Luke. He needed a mark in the 10th to win. And here, cool as a cucumber, throws that strike. And he put 10 on it to seal the deal. And he beat Kyle Shaw 166 to 163. So the Robustelli Danzero duo took a 1 0 lead over Sean Pellet. The next singles match, though, was a similar story, though somewhat different script. Pellet never really got things going. And Rick Danzero won easily, showing his skill here. 157 to 118. That gave the Robustelli Danzero duo a 2 0 lead going into the Scotch doubles match, which was do or die for Kyle Shaw and Eric Pellet. The firepower of Luke Robustelli and Rick Danzero, however, proved to be too much, and they took the first ever Duckpin TV doubles duel in a 3 nothing sweep. The question now, guys, is can they retain their title? Well, Eric, after watching that, what do you think? Well, based on what we saw in our last event, uh, where Luke and Rick took on a very talented pairing and Eric Pellet and uh, Kyle Shaw, they actually swept them. I'd say that Mike and Brian have their work cut out for them tonight. They certainly do, and uh, it was an exciting match, and I, I can't imagine that tonight won't feature another epic battle. And we're going to start that epic battle with Rick Dancero taking on Brian Miller right after this word from our sponsors. Holiday Lanes is located at 39 Spencer Street in Manchester, Connecticut. It has 32 duck pin bowling lanes, a full snack bar, and lounge. Have your next party, fundraiser, or corporate event at Holiday Lanes. Or come down to Open Bowl with friends and family. There are Globe Bowling specials on Friday and Saturday nights, as well as drink specials in the lounge. $5 Coors Light pitchers, $2.50 Coors Light or Miller Light bottles. Come down to Holiday Lanes, 39 Spencer Street, Manchester, Connecticut, and strike up some fun. Uh, we're going to start this doubles duel, too, in just a moment. We want to just briefly run down the format of our duel. Yeah, so basically, Pat, the, the doubles duel is a series of matches, each worth a certain amount of points. The duel begins with two singles matches, each worth one point. Uh, next is a scotch doubles match, very exciting, worth one point. Uh, this is a match where the bowlers will alternate shots. And finally, if we make it to a fourth match, which we didn't last time, right. Luke, Luke and Rick uh, swept their their um, opponents last time, um, the final match is worth uh, a two-on-two two two doubles format worth two points, and we'll conclude the doubles duel. So, Eric, if my math is correct, that means that the uh, first team to catch three points is going to be our doubles duel two champions. That's correct, Pat. It, um, it looks like we are, we're ready to kick off doubles duel part two. Luke, Rick Danzero is now taking the lanes in this singles match. Of course, tonight we are coming to you from Holiday Lanes in Manchester, Connecticut. So uh, a couple of these guys are a little more familiar with the uh, the alleys. Yeah, Rick, uh, 
a bowler here on Monday nights this past season. Um, mm. Very successful at this play. At very, this he throws the ball very well here, and uh, of course Brian Miller uh, as well, uh, house bowler, and uh, has some a lot of success here. Absolutely. Rick takes the lane here, looking to cover a six pin. A little, mm. just uh, let the little left of that didn't quite get it out there. Yeah, it looked like his shoulder was dropped just a little bit. I'll cover this up and move on. Didn't look like he rushed it though. It just just left it hanging a little bit to the left. And of course, we are using the the uh, pro tour format where the first bowler is going to bowl one box, and then every bowler will bowl two boxes until the final ball. Final box. Rick will have the chance to either seal it or try to make a shot to catch up. Yeah. Got Brian taking his first shot up here. Hits the head pin a little bit light on the left side. Leaves himself a three five ten. Yeah, this is one of those makeable shots, but there's not a lot of room for error. You got to be pretty precise on this one. Yeah, tricky. We it's got a what we call a baby split in it. You got to hit the uh, three pin on the inside or the outside, and he's just a bit on the outside of the the two pins there. Picks yeah, the five pin. Now, it's the, now, now we're going to start watching these guys as as we did in the last format, uh, the last uh, matches. Uh, they're going to start picking pins now. We saw a ten box. And uh, Brian, a little little slow start there with an eight, but uh, maybe showing a little a lot bit of nerves rolling. here. Yeah, but it, it is nerves. Very early. Though. Cameras are rolling. That's right. Let's see if he can shake those nerves off. Well, for somebody like Brian, it's going to take just one shot to get those nerves, and they'll be they'll be gone. One big bomb from him. And Brian's got such a smooth delivery. Really great balance. And that, that, again, that seems to be a common theme with all of the bowlers we've seen so far. And in the, in the format we're using, uh, these bowlers, basically, they're the epitome of consistency. Yeah. Brian left himself a little bit of a mess yeah, here. This, this is ugly. And he just picks not the one pin off not of it. Not getting any prettier with that. He's going to really have to maybe try to get two out of this and uh, hopefully get something started the next time he takes the lanes. And he grabs the two there. Did, did get a couple there. It's a, a real tough start, but uh, I'm sure you know he's probably happy that it happened now versus in the seventh or eighth or ninth box. That's right. Rick doing, Rick doing a little housekeeping there. Yep. Taking care of lane 10. Here at Holiday Lanes, you've got uh, a very different pin setter than uh, most houses you'd find, most duck pin alleys. This is what's called a, a Bulmar machine. Um, very different from the Sherman that you see. Yeah, the, uh, the unique thing about them, uh, as Rick goes for that little little two-pin spare and first mark of the day. He's on the board. On the board, as they say. Yeah, one of the, what I was saying with those uh, particular pin setters is... Uh, some of these guys that throw the ball relatively hard tend to send pins up in the air, and they end up sometimes getting stuck up in the pin center and causes a little bit of a delay once in a while. Yeah. So Rick's looking to establish a little bit of momentum here. Well. Try to fill that spare up. Yeah, he's, uh, well, you know, he, he's, he can really get him going. Uh, you give him a little bit of an early lead, he can really string him. A big ball right there. Great ball. It was a solid seven pin. That's just what he wanted. Right on the head pin there. Yeah, he fills hit, that, yeah, fills he, that spare he with hit, a nine. He had the load and a, and a real possibility at a strike there. Oh. Showing a little bit of a little unusual, you know, a couple singles here. early, but you know his his main objective in this match is just win the point. This is an accumulative effect score so if he just wins the point he wins the point doesn't matter what he shoots yeah only got to, only got to win by one pin right that's, Pat? that's correct one pin's enough you know at this point he already has a 13 13 pin lead uh, which you know puts puts brian in even more of a pressure situation yeah we see the dividends there being uh being paid for using that third ball um rick has gotten his 10 on the t on his two open frames and brian has only managed to get Eight, right, so in both of those four, frames. Four pins right there, just pin count alone. Yeah. 
And here's Brian with a you know a little triangle in the corner, and you got to hit that one. Yeah, it, it, sometimes that can be a very nasty attempt, but he hit that solid, and there he is. He's on the board. That's going to make him feel a lot more comfortable in this next ball. Yep, he's filling a frame, um, a third frame, which Rick left open, so he's got a chance to make up some ground. Quickly make a dent into that lead. Oh, big, big ball right there. Tough break. Oh, almost gets a pin. He's still, still working. Still, still working, but not. Uh, Maybe go wide down. one more time down, here. But didn't come around. A uh, great ball. A little bit heavy on the in the one-two pocket. Yeah, left himself a, just, a big just, split yeah, here. Tough break. It's very difficult spare leaf. Makeable, nevertheless. It is. It is makeable. It's, there is some space front to back between these pins. It's Absolutely. just a very thin slice. So you got to cut that six pin either off the wall or send it straight over into the pin. Oh, and oh, really nice shot. attempt he did. He, he he didn't hit anything, but he didn't miss that by very much. Yeah. Try to grab another pin here. So he's got his first mark. He's got a little bit of the butterflies out of the way. Now it's now he's going to start to make, and you know this is now when you got to start bowling right here. Right. He's going to have to make a charge next time he comes up. Because you've seen Rick so far throw three really good first balls. Yeah. Not far from having three strikes up yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Fact. Rick, there's a the fourth one. As right. expected, right on the head pin. Just hammer in the head pin. Leave right himself now. a five pin. And he'll take this pin all day. Well, yeah, he, you know, he's, 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 he's got to start. Drilling these one pinners to get get his mind off the fact that he missed a couple. And that's what you got to do. You got to just forget about the. And I'm sure he did. Forget about the first two and go get the one that counts, the one in front of you. That's right. So as we take a look at the score here in the fourth frame, um, we have Brian Miller with 43 in the fourth. We have Ricky da Ricky Danzaro with a 49 plus the fill on his on this ball we're watching right here. Another that and that's the first time he's actually he kind of crossed over the head pin there. He, not quite solid, but good drop, good load, and another 14 pin lead. Yep, 57 in the fourth. Another makeable split here. This is certainly isn't easy, but they're pretty when they go, as they say. Oh, and oh, he <laughs> shot it about as good. That as is he can. Uh, you don't see that Very happen often, right yeah. there. That is an unusual. Unusual shot right there to hit the five. He hit it, knocked it over, and did not Fell move in front it. of the seven <laughs> pin. Yeah. It's about as thin as you can slice it. Yeah. And uh, here you go, Rick, again. Just every single pin. Those are all going to be the ones at the end where, where Brian's going to maybe need a double instead of a mark. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the hallmark of a professional, I think, is recognizing how important that third ball is and making uh, making the most of it every chance. You've got to grab a couple of pins. You got to go up and get them. Oh, and Ooh, Brian, dear, really tough break here. Now this uh, this is a little bit more difficult than just the two wide pins. This one you've got to really get that five pin working. You've got to hit it just about perfect. Yeah, you can you can make two. You can make a really great shot at this and only carry two. In fact, it's more likely that you're going to get two than you're ever going to get three. I think at that point, Brian was just making sure he gets at least nine. Yeah. But again, there's, there's you know, another, another eight-pin standing. That's two, two, two right there. You just I without come back to bite, bite know, him. Without throwing one, Rick's basically gained another mark. That's right now, halfway you through. You know what Brian probably said to himself when he got on the lane here? It's a new half, right? It's a, it's, I was just going to say, it's the second half that counts right now. Good ball. And he but throws a great ball. Leaves ball. himself the 3-6. This is where he wants to start. Tie up this two-pinner, start the second half, start to put a little pressure on. We've both seen Brian bowl enough. We know he can put three, four, five together any, any, any time. Covered that very nicely. Right now we're going to... So a quick update on the scores here. Um, Brian Miller 
61 in the sixth, filling a spare. Uh, next time he gets up on the lane, and Rick Danzaro in control of the match so far, um, 67 in the fifth. We're going to get another quick word from one of our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Lucky Strike Lanes is located at 185 Stafford Road in Mansfield, Connecticut. That's Route 32 right across from the drive-in movie theater. Lucky Strike has 24 duck pin lanes and is home of the Eastern Classic, duck pin bowling's most historic tournament. Lucky Strike is also a great place for birthday parties, group outings, corporate functions, and fundraisers. Lucky Strike also has lanes available for open bowling. Rock and bowl every Friday and Saturday night as well. You can visit Lucky Strike Lanes at LuckyStrikeLanesCT.com or on Facebook, Lucky Strike Lanes CT. Hope to see you soon. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for staying with us. Before the match tonight, we had a chance to catch up with Rick Danzaro. We asked him what his favorite moment in his Duckman career was, and this is what he had to say. My favorite bowling moment was in 2005, in my last year bowling the Youth North South Challenge matches. I was able to win it in my last game. Uh, it was a great tribute because my mom passed away about seven months before, so it was nice to do that in her honor. That was my best moment. 9-10. <laughs> yeah, right on time. Uh, a great ball from Rick, a little heavy on the head pin, but wow. carries that 8-9-10, the domino effect. It looked like it looked like disaster, and then it wasn't so bad, and then it became real good. Yeah, in a hurry. And Rick's had some really great, well, that great hits yeah, tonight. That looked like a good ball, uh, and that one might have been a little bit heavier than some of the other ones, but he gets the strike. I think he'll take it. I I, I believe he will. He retains the 16 pin lead with that shot, and could I could even actually add to it. Uh, we see him miss the head pin for the first time this he match. Went off. Off the side of that. Gets four out of it, but if well, you're going to miss the head pin, or I guess the right time to do it is on a strike. Yeah, you get a second attempt. You know, even now, if he throws a nine load, it's really going to force Brian to mark, to gain. And, and he's running out of, you know, paper's starting to get thin up there. Oh, and Rick almost manages to. Yeah, he might steal ten out of this. Yeah, he gets. No, he's going to get nine, but. Uh, gets nine on the strike. But there was a chance that pin might just tap it right in the back yeah, of the head. Yeah, it looked like that messenger pin was going to carry the both of them. Spin off the five right into the head pin. So again, there's you know there's the nine load, and if he does as he's been doing all the whole game, he's going to get another ten box. He's not leaving anything, anything on the deck. And Brian um, is going to take the lane here. In uh, at a in a very important uh, moment. Uh, it looks um, right down, to fill a mark to yeah. keep, try to keep pace with the uh, with what Rick just did, and then the opportunity to get a hit. Yeah, he he needs, a, he needs a mark to gain. He's down 16 plus. Oh, and he throws that's a great ball. Another nice ball, and a little heavy in that one three pocket. It's a common leave. If you're a little heavy, he's looking at the two six two four six. So he's not he's quite to split the two and slide. Yeah, that he's not quite into a must-make situation yet. But over. man, he's shot him well. He's with uh, yeah. He, both of them shot him. Shot these splits well. So with three boxes to go, he's looking at a twenty-pin deficit, and uh, he he can't rely on Rick making, you know, not making spares at this point. He's he's gonna have to do it on his own, I think. Yeah, no and question about it. He's starting right now. Gonna have to hit the head pin every single ball here and hope he can carry a. A double to outpace whatever Rick is going to do to guarantee himself to, uh, that. Uh, yeah, he's got a 19 pin deficit with three boxes to go. Yeah. He throws a great ball. Certainly his best he ball of the day. Get that five pin to fall. He had two pins going at it. Yep. The one with the most juice on it fell off the back, unfortunately. This might be getting close to a, you know, pretty much a must make. Uh, otherwise, he's going to have to just start throwing strikes. Yeah. So and he big shot. Puts us in a little bit of suspense, but he yep. but he makes the five pin. Yep. Now he's you know now he is really relying on Rick to maybe.
give them a give them an opening. And the way Rick's been throwing the ball, it's you know that's 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 really asking a lot right now. Yeah. Well, we have seen Rick miss a couple of singles. Um, Otherwise, this match would be essentially over. Yeah. Oh, there's, the, there's a little glimmer of hope. If there was, yeah. um, there's, there's a chance. Almost, uh, almost a rewind to what we saw in his last frame. Pulled the ball, yep. hit heavy on that three pin. Far. And similar, same same thing last frame. He hits the three pin and then the two pin on a second ball. Well, Rick once again trying to clean up the deck and then set himself up in that ninth box for what he hopes to be a clinching tenth box. First pin he's missed all night. And the deficit is down to 18 pins. Ryan filling a mark. Can, can Britt get this down to single it, digits? It's, it's now, yeah, I mean, Rick really needs to put something here, I think, to put a little pressure on Brian. It could give Brian a, a, a huge boost of confidence if he goes up there with an open. Oh. oh, there's one of those Rick Dancero bombs right and there. Rick applies the pressure. Remember that shot from uh, our last uh, segment where he just exploded oh, the pins off. Yeah, the it was. You know, I think in that particular match, Kyle and Eric had just put together their first real threat with a double, and 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 Luke and Eric, and Luke and Rick went up there and just matched it. Yeah. Oh, and Brian throws a great ball, carries nine out of it. It is single digits now. Brian can manage to cover this single. This this now becomes a, a one one box game, and and if uh, Rick manage, if Rick leaves the tenth frame open, still still anybody's game at this point. Oh, oh that's a that's a very tough tough miss right there. Yeah, you gotta wonder if that a uh, little bit of pressure that Rick applied to Brian got to him. Well, unfortunately, what that means is that Brian's more than likely going to have to throw a double here with a pretty good count. I don't he's, count this guy out. No, no, I'm not saying I've he's out of it. I've I'm seen just, him do this on more than one he's occasion. Down, he's down nine pins plus a, plus a hit. So there's, there's the first, the first one. one. There's the first one. Yeah. I think he's wishing he had that ninth uh, frame back. He probably is going to, you know, kick himself over the missing the, the, the ten pin, but he can make up for it right here. Yep. Still a close match. Anything can happen when Rick gets up there. Let's get a, go let's right get through a the middle. possible 136. But that ball just slid off to the, just yeah, off the gonna left. Have to, he's going to have to clean this up. I have any hope. that? Well, you know, Eric's in a position, uh, I'm sorry, Rick's in a position right now where six a six load, I believe, well, not even you have a 114. He's got a 115 working. He, Yeah, I mean, he, something really bad would have to happen for Rick not to uh, close this out. He needs a total of 10 pins. And, Any. and nine is more than enough. Looked a little bit off balance there. Center of gravity was, was not over his leg when he delivered that ball, but Got away with it. Managed to hold on to it. So Put at this the point, ball in the pocket. At this point, we can close out yeah, match. we can say that uh, the team of Dancero and Robustelli continues their undefeated streak in the format. Four, four matches in a row so far. Rick misses the seven pin there, but he's all right with that. And once again, cleans up the deck for a final score of Rick Dancero, 134, and Brian Miller, on 124. We'll be right back with a word from our winner right after this message. Holiday Lanes is located at 39 Spencer Street in Manchester, Connecticut. It has 32 duck pin bowling lanes, a full snack bar, and lounge. Have your next party, fundraiser, or corporate event at Holiday Lanes, or come down to open bowl with friends and family. There are glow bowling specials on Friday and Saturday nights, as well as drink specials in the lounge. 
$5 Coors Light pitchers, $2.50 Coors Light or Miller Light bottles. Come down to Holiday Lanes, 39 Spencer Street, Manchester, Connecticut, and strike up some fun. All right, I'm here with the winner of our first match tonight, uh, Rick Danzaro. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it looked early on. Uh, you missed a couple of singles, but you, you managed to pull it together and, and come out on top. Yeah, I think one of the big things for me that game was really holding my sticks. I mean, early on, even though I missed the singles, I covered them for the 10, and I managed to gain five or six pins that way early. Really, you know, some of those things we coach on in the youth league still pays off at this point. So yeah. holding the sticks was a big key that game. Right. Great demonstration of uh, being present on that third ball every time. Uh, so how do you feel about your teammate Luke's chances against Mike Labrie? Well, I put the pressure on him because I didn't want to be the first one to lose, so now it's on him. I like his chances, but we'll see. It's always good. Mike's a good bowler in this house, everywhere else as well. So hopefully we'll come out on top there too. Great. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Duckpin TV's presentation of Doubles Duel 2. I'd like to take a moment to thank the volunteers, donors, and host bowling center for making these shows possible. Make sure you tune in next week on Monday, June 2nd, as Doubles Duel 2 continues with a singles match between Luke Robistelli and Mike Labrie. Stay tuned to Duckpin TV, the home of Duckpin Bowling.